Well, thank you very much, Bill, for that exciting introduction that clearly represented me, particularly the MBE, feel like I'm sell out now, part of the empire. If we can go to the first slide. Um, so what I really just want to illustrate today in the five minutes I've got is that I've entered a really powerful emotional network. In the background, it should be the music of Bob Marley talking about mental slavery. The challenge for us is how do we work across color lines to empower communities for better outcome in addressing race equality? And I want to call myself a lived experience clinician. I don't see myself a survivor. I change people's cognitive processes for better outcomes. And that's where we come through this second person activism. Can I go to the next slide, please? And so one of the things that we have in a challenge is how do we address what the past has informed what we do now? And we call this the pre-production stage, and where a particular type of philosophy and psychiatry emerges that demonizes heritage of black people. And in this, we've got pictures of Cartwright, Bannon, Du Bois. And what we're trying to say is our ultimate challenge is how can we work together across these historic lines? a better outcome for psychiatry, science, research, and particularly those people most affected in the mental health system. Next slide, please. And here I've got a really painful picture here about pre-production from can't write a slave to what happened during the summer. You can see the symbolic relationship. But we want to move beyond our mission about working across the line to challenge theories and models that are leading to certain outcomes which are not enabling us to actually challenge the lived ontological experiences of people with lived experience and give them parity with medical psychiatry and really engage in what I begin to feel is a civil rights model about black lives. And there we go at the end about working across the color line is vitally important. That's been the function of the network. And I think it's epitomized in our pictures and mission statements. Let's go to the next one, please. So the biggest challenge for me, achievements, is not what we've done, it's how we've changed people. I wanted to listen to the short statement by a person who couldn't understand his whiteness, but begins to conceptualize it to a level which I think is actually brilliant. Can you play the tape, please? With, with Colin and this group is that, of course, that very reliability, right at the very heart of what we regard as best science, immediately excludes minority voices. And if the system is predominantly white, that means it immediately excludes black voices. Yeah? So the very reliability, it's not so much that, uh, so if white supremacy actually is embodied in the very theoretical basis on which we're trying to change things. Now I hasten to add the reason why I hang in with, <laughs> with this group and working with Colin despite my ignorance and continuing difficulty of understanding what it's all about is because I think what Colin's brought to this dis whole discussion is something really quite novel. It is about inside, outside, and it's captured for me in the phrase getting beyond the color bar. And of course, it doesn't mean literally the color bar. What it means is getting beyond a black-white standoff, you know, Jewish, Aryan standoff, whatever those tribal standoffs Next slide, please. The music's epitomizing is this a revolution. So the future for the network is impact, changing people's lives, ensuring releasing people of color that are imprisoned. Can we emancipate people from what Bob Marley was saying in that powerful narrative? psychological and diagnostic models of racism? Do we have to dismantle a system where we are commissionalizing the black body into a new type of economic slavery? But lastly, this is the positive thing I really want to address today. Campaigning workshops that change the way we work together, but also looking at backstage whiteness. How can we work with consultants? And we really want to actually encourage people to do that. The next slide, this is the last slide. Just want to say to people, it's be a tearful, painful, harassing, intimidating to expose yourselves. And through that exposure, you find out who you really are in addressing race equality. 
beyond the values, beyond the type, beyond the clinical type of, this is crucial. I hope you've enjoyed it. That's the end of my presentation.